everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn Hay Salmon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Today I'm going to be chatting a little bit about SEO tips for beginners. If you have a website or if you're a blogger, then you know to, the best way to get traffic is to get organic traffic and that is through search engine optimization. And while search engine optimization might be might seem a little bit overwhelming if you've never done it before, it really it isn't rocket science. There are some step, you know, there's some set things that you can do that can really improve the performance of your website and to gain traffic. Here are my 10 basic SEO tips for beginners. Number one, get yourself an SEO plugin. And the ones that I recommend, there's two of them, is Yoast SEO or All-in-One SEO. Yoast SEO is really, really awesome for beginners. Uh, that is the, the SEO plugin that I started learning on and I found it really helpful because it's got a checklist. So what happens is if your post is well SEO'd, it's going to have a little green dot. If it's okay, it's going to have a yellow dot. And if it is badly SEO, it's going to have a red dot. So that makes it really easy for a beginner to see how well they're doing with their SEO. And if you've got a red dot, you can go to the checklist and you can check and see exactly where it is that you've gone wrong. Now, I don't actually use Yoast SEO anymore. And there's, there's kind of two reasons for that. Number one, I found that the checklist that they do provide is actually not adequate for me at this stage because I've learned a lot more and the other point is that I had a very um, complex website when I started out that I had designed for me and I had a lot of plugins and a lot of customization and what happened is that the Yoast SEO plugin conflicted with some of my other plugins which made my website um, you know the function functionality not very good so I took out Yoast SEO and I started using all-in-one SEO which I found really, really pleasant. It's a very light plugin and it does a lot of the work for you. So yes, that's point number one, get yourself an SEO plugin. Point number two is get yourself set up on Google Analytics. And while Google Analytics within itself is not going to really do anything for you in terms of SEO, the fact that you've got all the information for the traffic that comes to your website in one place is going to really help you in the future and while you if, you if you have a new blog you won't be having any traffic at the moment but in five years time you're going to want to look back and see how your traffic grew what it was you were doing that had that effect so within google analytics you can see how much traffic you're getting exactly where it's coming from how long they're spending on your website what your bounce rate is and lots of other information that's going to help you in the future my tip number three is get yourself set up on Google Search Console and submit your sitemap. And basically what this is going to do is tell Google where you are and how your website is set out and it's going to help Google find all of your content, which means it will index your content easier. Number four, keyword research. I cannot emphasize enough how just doing a little bit of basic keyword research is going to change your game. And basically a keyword is what people type into Google or a search engine to find you. So if you know what people are typing into search engines, you know what you need to focus on for your articles. And what you basically want to know is what is the keyword that people are searching for to find your website and how many people are searching, what the competition is and how hard it is to target that keyword. And if you've got all of that information at your fingertips, you are going to find it so much easier to SEO your website and your content. Number five, you are going to want to publish quality content on a regular basis. Now, I know a lot of people pump out a lot of content, but is it quality content? And that's a very, very big difference. If you can write content that your readers love, this is actually going to tell Google that you are great. Number six, you are going to want to put your keywords into key places in your content. So you're going to want to have your keyword in your URL, in your meta description, in your meta title, in some headings, in some alt tags of your images, and in the first paragraph and the last paragraph of your content. There's various other places you can put them, but that is it for starters. Oh, and um, any file that you upload to your content, rename your file as your keyword first. This goes for images, it goes for PDFs, it goes for video files, absolutely anything. 
rename it as your keyword and then upload it to your website and that will make a difference. Number seven, you are going to want to optimize your images. So you're going to want to make your images a good size. If your images are huge and bulky, they are going to slow down your website and if your website takes too long to load, people are going to run away because nobody wants to sit and wait for images or a post to load and that will drop your bounce rate and it will have a ripple effect. You will also want to, uh, like I previously said, um, you're going to want to name your image as your keyword and then you're also going to want to put your keyword into the alt text when you upload it to your website. Number eight, you are going to want to use headings, H1, H2, H3, H4 and even H5 headings. And what this is going to do is, it's, firstly, it's going to help the spiders um, understand your, your website. So when Google crawls your website, it's going to help Google understand what the content is about. It's going to also, for your readers, break your, your content up into manageable pieces. And a lot of people just scan. And, you know, if it's just a big bulk of text, it's not going to be easy for people to scan your content and know what it's about. But if you break it up into headings for each section, someone can easily scan down and find the information that they need, which will keep people on your website for longer and people will find your website more useful. Uh, you also add, like I've mentioned before, with putting your keywords in key places, um, don't forget to put your keywords in some headings. Number nine, linking. Internal linking and external linking. Within your website, on every blog post, add some links to previous posts and as soon as you publish an article, go back to an old post and add a link to your new post. Um, this will help Google and search engines to understand your website and know how to, you know, what, what's connected to what. And it will also help your readers to move around your website as well. You will have higher page views and you will have a lower bounce rate. It's important whenever you do linking to also use the right anchor text. Anchor text is the actual text that you've linked. So if you keep going click here and that's the words that you link, that's not going to help you very much. Rather say view this post about how to SEO and link how to SEO to an article on how to SEO. That will help the search engines to understand what all the articles on your website is about as well as your readers. And then external linking, it's important to link out to websites as well, especially high authority websites that will help you to rank higher. It will show Google that you are generous and that you like to link out to other people. Number 10, share your content on social networks. This is going to be quite a biggie. Um, firstly, the more you share your content, the more people can find your website as well. And also think about it, Google Plus, it's part of Google, so it will help to rank your website. So those are my basic tips for SEO for beginners. There is a lot more that goes into it. A lot of what I explain now is on-page SEO, which is things that you implement on your own website. But there's also off-page SEO, which involves building backlinks and that sort of thing. It's stuff you do outside your website. Um, sharing on social networks is part of off-page SEO because you are sharing on social networks. You're sharing on another website and that is part of creating quality backlinks to your site. So that's all I have for you today. I'm going to share some more videos soon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.